Hello everyone and welcome back to my YouTube channel. So today, I've been waiting to do this for quite a while, I've got a big book haul for you guys. I think this is probably from like the last three months or so, maybe longer, I honestly can't, I lose track of time at this point. But I have <laughs> all of these and there's another pile down here to talk about with you guys and I will just try and rush through them because I'm not about being here all day and boring you guys with all these books. But I am very excited about all of them. Obviously I wouldn't buy them if I wasn't interested in them. Let's just dive right in. I really hope you enjoyed this video. I hope that you find some books that you may be interested in reading or looking into. And yeah, let's just dive into all of these great books. All right. So I don't really know where to start. I have a pile of like, hardbacks down here and I might start with those. Yeah, just this is a little bit overwhelming so I'll start here. I'll start with my most recent edition actually. Um, I got Silver in the Bone by Alexander Bracken. Um, she was also the author of Law, which I do have here. Um, I have the special, Illum I think this was an Illumicrate edition, I haven't read it. Um, and this was the Fairy Lou edition of Silver in the Bone. Um, yeah. So I'm very excited to read it. I'm actually really glad that I got this because I was planning on picking it up myself anyway. So the fact that it came in a fairy loot box was just awesome. I'm a little bit disappointed, like they've not changed anything really on the front cover, but the edges are gorgeous. And then um, they have artwork on the end pages. And then underneath the dust jacket is actually quite nice. It's quite a bit of artwork on there. So I think that's actually really nice. Yeah, I'm very glad about that because I was planning on getting it anyway. So I've got Silver in the Bone by Alexander Brecken. Um, what next? Oh, so I don't, you can't really see from here, but I read the House of Night series years ago. I'm talking like, <laughs> like 13, 14 years ago when I was 16. And I absolutely loved it. Like teenage Amy loved that series so much. Um, but I only read like the first five or six books, I think, and there was like 12. Um, so I've been slowly picking up the books and they actually changed the covers halfway through. And this is the old cover. This is the OG, like the cover that I actually, it's like the only type of cover that I like with people, actual people on it. Yeah, so I've got eight. I've got eight of the books now. Um, I'm gonna try and collect them all and do a big reread of them and just see how they hold up to like, how I used to feel about them. Basically, it's like Hogwarts, but a more adult version. Oh no, it's still, it's still like YA and it's about vampires. It's basically a vampire school. <laughs> I really liked it, yeah, it's called The House of Night and the first one is called Marked. So yeah, I was really happy that I found that because I really struggled to find the like OG covers. So I'm really happy about that one. And then lovely George surprised me with Bring Me Their Hearts by Sarah Wolf. This is the first in a trilogy and I've been eyeing up the whole trilogy to be honest, just because the covers are beautiful. Although there are additional covers that I don't like nearly as much as these. So I'm gonna have to try and collect them in this series, uh, but it is a YA fantasy epic trilogy and I'm really looking forward to reading it. Uh, it is about an immortal unaging soldier of a witch bound to the witch night seer. Zara longs for freedom from the woods they hide in with her heart in a jar under Night Singer's control. She serves the witch unquestioningly until Night Singer asks Zara for a prince's heart in exchange for her own with one addendum. If she's discovered infiltrating the court, Night Singer will destroy Zara's heart rather than see her tortured by the witch hating nobles. Crown Prince Lucian hates the royal court as much as it loves him. Every tutor too afraid to correct him and every girl jockeying for a place at his darkly handsome side. No one can challenge him until the arrival of Lady Zera. She is inelegant, smart mouthed, carefree and out for his blood. The prince's honor has him quickly aiming for her throat. So it begins a game of cat and mouse between a girl with nothing to lose and a boy who has it all. Winner takes the loser's heart, literally. Doesn't that sound so fun? Uh, it just sounds like enemies to lovers, court, intrigue, witches, fantasy. Yeah, 
I'm here for it. So yeah, that's the first in a trilogy. I'm pretty sure, it, yeah, I'm like 99% sure it's a trilogy. Um, I then picked up Song of Silver Flame Like Night. This is by Emily Wen Zhao. This is an epic new fantasy duology inspired by Chinese mythology, which you know me. Anything Chinese, Japanese, Korean, especially mythology, oh, I'm there for it. I love it. Yeah, and the cover is just gorgeous so i picked up that that was a little treat to myself i think i got that on the tiktok shop actually for like eight pounds which is ridiculous and then as well from the tiktok shop i then i picked up these infinite threads by tahira Mafi. this is the second oh, i just realized the first is behind all these maybe when i make my way through i'll find it uh but it is the second to this woven kingdom and she is also the author of the shatter me series which is a very popular ya series that i have not read but i will say the under the dust jacket of this is really nice as well so yeah i picked up that i don't want to read this because i haven't read the first one as always <laughs> but yeah i got these infinite threads oh this is another fairy loop book i got seven faceless saints by mk lob it's a beautiful cover um this was the adult Fairy loot. Whoa! I forgot how nice those uh, edges were. This is the fairy loot edition and it's got beautiful artwork. Ooh. Yep. Here for it. Here for it. Very pretty. It looks like a bookshelf. So yes, yeah, Seven Faceless Saints. Very excited to read that one. And it is a dark and delicious murder mystery with lush prose, gripping characters and an intricate lore that will keep you turning the pages. Seven Faceless Saints is an absolute hit. So yeah, I'm very excited. I hadn't actually heard anything about that one until it came in the Fairyloo box, so that was very exciting. That's one reason I really like Fairyloo is because a lot of time I don't actually know the books and they're a big surprise. Oh, I did pick this up in a Waterstones vlog, which you've probably, you may have seen, I don't know, it's up on my channel somewhere. Um, it's a short story collection by Siaka Murata and it is a horror short story collection. Yeah, and it just sounded really interesting life ceremony it says these stories laid complete claim to me ominous and charming brilliantly sad there is no one word wasted here i lost significant sleep over this collection yeah i love a good collection of short stories especially when they're like horror they just hit they they just short story horror novels just hit different i then got midnight in everwood um, I actually bought this off another book talker who was selling it and I thought, well, I really want it. I did have it on Kindle, but you know, I'm hardback. Obviously I'm going to buy it. Oh, and it came with a free bookmark. Thanks, Steph. Put that in my little bookmark jar. Yeah, so this is a spellbinding reimagining of the Nutcracker, where magical wonders await as the clock strikes 12. Very whimsical and magical, I think, and yeah, a re reimagining of the Nutcracker, which you can see down to there so yeah very excited about that one we've got two left <laughs> oh, i then got a beautiful copy of the book eaters by sunya dean look at that i couldn't believe this look at that this was actually from another book talker and it's signed as well and they sent it me for free i didn't buy it so they were doing giveaways of books that they'd received in book boxes that they weren't that interested in reading and I really wanted this anyway so I messaged her saying oh is the book eaters up for grabs and she said yeah just send me your address and she actually just sent it to me like I'll find her tiktok somewhere and post it on here because she was so generous I couldn't believe it so yeah I got the book eaters and I was very very excited about this and it is just a gorgeous edition as well I'm over the moon oh it's an illum there you go it's a luma crate um I was wondering because it's definitely not fairy loot so I didn't get it so it's an Illumicrate exclusive and she just sent it me for free. Oh, so generous. Last but certainly not least, I was so excited about this one and George treated me to it because I wouldn't shut up about it. It is God Killer by Hannah Kaner. Is that not just one of the most beautiful covers? I don't, honestly, this is one of the covers, this is like the type of cover that I am genuinely, this is gonna sound so bad, I don't even care what's in the pages because I'm sorry. I could just stare at that all day. I could literally get that printed out as artwork. It's just so, so beautiful. So it says, you are not welcome here, God killer. Kissen's family were killed by zealots of a fire god. Now she makes a living killing gods and enjoys it. That is until she finds a god she cannot kill. Skeddy, a god of white lies, has somehow bound himself to a young noble and they are both on the run from unknown assassins. 
Joined by a disillusioned knight on a secret quest, they must travel to the ruined city of Blenraden, where the last of the wild gods reside to each beg a favour. Pursued by demons and in the midst of civil war, they will all face a reckoning. Something is rotting at the heart of the kingdom and only they can be the ones to stop it. Oh, I'm so excited. I always love fantasy books where they're like on a mission, traveling somewhere through the wilderness and like traveling to some kind of old temple or like a magic ridden city or just, yeah, I just love it when the characters are on their way somewhere and it's just, yeah, I love it. So I'm so, I'm so, so, so excited about this one. This is like one of my top get, uh, books to buy for 2023 and I'm so excited to read it. Right, so now we're on to the paperbacks. I have a lot. <laughs> I will start here. So this is The Severed Thread by Leslie Vedder. This is the second in the Bone Spindle series. I loved The Bone Spindle. I got it as an arc and I read it last year sometime. I can't remember whenabouts but I absolutely devoured it. I absolutely loved it. Um, it was about, basically, again, two people were sent on a quest to go and find a sleeping prince. It was almost like a, yeah, a retelling of Sleeping Beauty, but it was the prince that was asleep and she had to wake him up, but she was having dreams of him and it was just so excellent. And again, yeah, it was another of people on a mission through the wilderness trying to survive and get to this place. I, I obviously have a theme of books that I like, but yeah, this is the second in the series and I'm so excited to read this, but I'm contemplating reading, rereading the first one again before I read this, just because I enjoyed it so much. So yeah, I have the severed thread. Uh, next, I got quite a lot of romances. I think uh, I went to the works and they have loads of romances for really good prices. So I just picked loads up, especially because I'm going on holiday soon. So very much excited for that. So I picked up The Roommate by Rosie Denan. This is just a very popular book talk romance book. <laughs> so I picked up The Roommate. I also picked up The Unhoneymooners by Christina Lauren. This again is a very popular romance book on, well just everywhere to be honest. So that's two of the romance books. There's so many, honestly I've got so many romance books. I never used to read romance but I'm just really enjoying it at the minute. Oh I was so excited about this one. My favourite book of absolute all times is Goodnight Mr Tom by Michelle McGorian and I have an absolute beautiful hardcover edition that's like buried in books over there at the minute I need to go and get out. I'm like reorganizing everything. But my very first original copy of it, I actually lent to my cousin and she still has it. She's planning on reading it, um, but she's had it for like three years. <laughs> she just keeps getting distracted by other books and that's fine. Like I trust her completely with that book, but I used to love the old like very first edition that I had that I got given when I was in school because we did it in, we read it in school and I found <laughs> I you can't buy this anymore online and I found it on a, cha a, cha a charity shop and it's pristine condition like never been read and this is like nostalgia in a book for me <laughs> this is my absolute favorite book of all time and I genuinely don't think anyone will anything will ever change that we'll see I have other incredible books, but this is like, I think it's the nostalgia for me that hits the most. It just, it has a very special place in my heart. Good night, Mr. Tom, I managed to find a, one of the original covers that you can't actually buy anymore. So I was so, oh, you should have seen me when I saw it in the charity shop. I freaked out. More romance. I picked up the three, oh, I'll find them eventually, but there's three Tessa Bailey books. It was three for six pounds at the work. So I picked all three of them. So I got Fix Her Up and I'll find the other two when I go through. Um, yeah, just popular romance novels. <laughs> so I got Fix It Up. I also got X's and O's by Amy Lee, and I have I have the second one in here somewhere as well, so I'll find that one as well. But yeah, I got X's and O's. I told you I got so many romance novels this time. Um, I picked up By the Book. It was only three pounds. I hadn't heard of it before, but it sounded really fun. And anything to do with books inside my books, I love. So yeah, I got By the Book. That is by Jasmine Galori. Picked up the last in the, like the Billionaire Brothers. There's the fine print, terms and conditions and final offer. And this is a chunky book for a romance novel. You don't often get books this thick for romance. Almost 600 pages. Oh, it's the Dreamland Billionaire series, Billionaire Trilogy. And it's about three Billionaire Brothers. Romance novels, apparently they're very spicy. I'm looking forward to reading them. I picked up the Wasiri Society of Lady Scoundrels. I do have, I think I have the second 
in the series on Kindle and I didn't realise it was the second in the series when I bought it. So I had to go and get this and they had it at the works. I'm pretty sure it was that way around. <laughs> I know whichever way around I bought it, I bought the second one first. So yeah, this must Yeah, so I'm very much looking forward to this. The other one is the Witches Secret Society of Gentle Witches. Gentle witches, gentle women, wi something like that. I'm just gonna do a quick shuffle around. I then picked up the second in the, oh gosh, what was the first one called? So the first one is A Magic Steeped in Poison and then I picked up A Venom Dark and Sweet. This is again, an East Asian mythology fantasy and I'm here for it. I'm j I love it, I just love it. Um, Yeah, and the covers, <laughs> this must be like some of the most beautiful covers. Aren't they gorgeous? So yeah, I picked up the second and I was very excited about that. Oh, there you go. Here's the other two Tessa Bailey books. So there's Tools of Engagement and Love Her or Lose Her. And this is like a second chance romance. They're just like sweet romance novels. I don't know, I'm, I'm assuming they're spicy because they're Tessa Bailey and the few Tessa Bailey books that I've read have been spicy. Yeah, I have those three. And yeah, they're all three for six pounds at the works at the minute, so snap them up and then <laughs> speaking of spicy romance books i picked up icebreaker by hannah grace um this is yeah ice skater and ice hockey player it's very popular at the minute i'm looking forward to reading it <laughs> i picked up the pharmacist uh this is a charity shop find and it sounded really interesting and like claustrophobic it was kind of like a thriller horror i'll read the synopsis of this just because it's a bit unusual so it says, the bunker is designed to keep them all safe. Few people made it to the bunker. Wolf is one of the lucky ones. She's safe and employed as the bunker's pharmacist, doling out medicine under the watchful eye of their increasingly erratic and paranoid leader. But when the leader starts to ask things of Wolf, favors she can hardly say no to, it seems her luck is running out. Wolf must navigate the powder keg of life underground where one misstep will light the fuse. The walls that keep her safe also have her trapped. The bunker is designed to keep them all safe, but is it the place of greatest danger? How much more is Wolf willing to give to stay alive? Doesn't that sound good? <laughs> really claustrophobic, really tense it sounds like. So yeah, and I found it at the charity shop for £1.50. Perfect condition. And look at that. Don't you just love a good floppy book? Can we start a petition to just say all books should be like this? Because why why would you want it where you can just like, you have to break the spine open and just be able to read it? Yeah. I then got to Get a Life, Chloe Brown. Now I had, it's a trilogy, a romance trilogy, and I had all three of them on my Amazon wish list. and George bless him, he accidentally bought me the second one. I was still, obviously, I'm so grateful that he bought it me anyway. So, but I, it meant I had to get the first one, which I was going to do anyway. So, um, and I got it for £3 from the works. Yeah, there's three of them. I don't know if it's three sisters. I feel like the first two are sisters, at least. Very looking forward to it. There we go. And then I got Set on You by Amy Lee. I can't remember which is the first and which is the second to be honest. But Ali Hazelwood liked it and she's the author of The Love Hypothesis and Love on the Brain, which I really liked. Uh, yeah, so I got Set on You by Amy Lee. I got so many romance novels. What is going on? Then picked up Lessons in Chemistry. This sounds really interesting and it kind of speaks to my feminist heart. So I will read the synopsis of this because it just, yeah, it just sounds really good. So it says, chemist Elizabeth Zott is not your average woman. In fact, Elizabeth Zott would be the first to point out that there is no such thing. But it's the early 1960s and her all-male team at Hastings Research Institute take a very unscientific view of equality. Forced to resign, she reluctantly signs on as the host of a cooking show, Supper at Six. But her revolutionary approach to cooking, fueled by scientific and rational commentary, grabs the attention of a nation and soon a legion of overlooked housewives find themselves daring to change the status quo one molecule at a time. I'm so excited to read this. It just speaks to my feminist heart and I'm just, yeah, I'm so looking forward to it. I really, really cannot wait and it is, it's doing so well at the minute. And apparently it's soon to be an Apple TV series. I don't watch Apple TV, but maybe I can find it somewhere else. Um, I then got the two Lucy score books. I got Things We Never Got Over and Things We Hide From The Light. I think this is like a small town romance of a woman who has a small child. She escapes, escapes a marriage. She's running away from her wedding. Uh, she was riding to the rescue of her estranged 
twin in Virginia. Yeah, it just sounds really interesting. And uh, a bearded bad boy, Barber Knox, prefer- prefers to live his life the way he takes his coffee alone. Naomi wasn't just running away from her wedding. Too bad for Naomi. Her evil twin hasn't changed at all. There's a reason Knox doesn't do complications or high maintenance women, especially not the romantic ones. At least that's the plan until the trouble turns to real danger. Small town romance. Oh no, she's left with her niece, her twin sister's niece who lives in this town. So I got the two. They're really chunky books, uh, but I've been hearing fantastic things about this series so far. Um, everywhere pretty much so I'm very looking forward to reading these two I think I also have this one on Kindle they were, they were cheap from the works I really wanted them and I have a problem um, I then picked up she is a haunting by Tran Than Tran Tran Than Tran I did this I did pick this up in a Waterstones book haul so you may have already seen it but I'll talk about it again it's a haunted house story set in Vietnam which sounds really cool I've never read a haunted house story in Vietnam before I don't think I've ever read any stories set in Vietnam which is terrible to admit so I'm very glad I ha now have <laughs> some books in my collection yeah and I'm very much looking forward to reading it I love haunted houses it's literally one of my favorite genres I eat those books up. I then picked up Maggie Moves On. This is another works romance. House flipping sensation and YouTube star Maggie Nichols can't wait to dig into her next challenge. Arriving in a tiny American town with only a coffee maker, Maggie is prepared to restore a crumbling Victorian mansion in four months or less. She has her to-do list, her blueprints and her team. What she doesn't have time for is sexy laid back landscaper Silas Wright. There you go, that's all you need to know. And there is the sexy laid back landscaper and there's Maggie and they have a dog called Kevin. The dog is called Kevin. Okay, I need to read this right now. Yeah, so I got Maggie moves on. It just sounds really interesting. It just sounds fun. I then got Two Wrongs Make a Right by Chloe Lightlees. Um, it's fake dating romance and it just sounds really fun. And again, another works three for six pounds romance book, so Nice and affordable as well for you. Looking forward to it. I'm just gonna scooch them on round again. I then picked up The Luminaires. This is by Susan Dennard. This is from the works as well. I don't know if it's YA fantasy or not, but I will read the synopsis of this because I can't quite remember what it's about. So it says, Hemlock Falls isn't like other towns. <laughs> you won't find it on a map, your phone won't work here, and the forest outside town might kill you. Winnie Wednesday wants nothing more than to join the Luminaries, the ancient order that protects humanity from the nightmares that rise in the forest of Hemlock Falls each night. Ever since her father was exposed as a traitor, Winnie and her family have been shunned, but on her 16th birthday, she can take the deadly Luminary Hunter trials and restore her family's good name, or die trying. In order to survive, Winnie must enlist the help of the one person who can train her, Jay Friday. Winnie Wednesday and Jay Friday. Resident bad boy and Winnie's ex-best friend. While Jay might be the best hunter in Hemlock Falls, he also knows more, more about the forest nightmares than he should. And together, he and Winnie will discover a danger lurking in Hemlock Falls that no one has prepared for. Not all monsters can be slain and not all nightmares are confined to the dark. Doesn't that sound fun? Yeah, so I'm really looking forward to that. The luminaries. So it's luminaires, but it's luminaries. And the cover, come on. Oh. Beautiful. Um, <laughs> I picked up The Graceling uh, by Christine Cashore. Now this is a quadrilogy. I have all four of them now. <laughs> and this is the first in the series. And I was so sure that I had all four, but I could not find The Graceling anywhere. I literally, and I did like a full book reorganizing video and I did like a full, full <laughs> book clean out and I could not for the life of me find it and I knew I had it somewhere, so I don't know what's happened. Um, so yeah, I had to buy the first one to be able to read the series, because I had the rest, which is Fire. So there's, oh, the covers are beautiful as well. So there's Graceling, there's Fire, there is Bitter Blue, and then there is Winter Keep. And they're just beautiful books, so yeah. I bought the Graceling because I didn't have it for some reason. I did, I did have it, where did it go? I then picked up the second, in the Shadow of the Gods series. I don't know how many books this is gonna be, oh, but it looks amazing. Look at that. Giant gods. Um, I got this from Waterstones. I do have the first one. So yeah, I have The Shadow of the Gods by John Gwynn and then The Hunger of the Gods. I'm really looking forward to reading that. George just got home with Bella, so I'm sorry it might be a bit noisy now, but we're almost done. Woo! Um, 
That was George. <laughs> yeah, we're almost done, so I'm sorry if there's a lot of background noise, but it's Bella. She's a Springer Spaniel. She's going to make noise. Um, I pick up the last two in the... So there's What Lies Beyond the Veil, which is the first one, and then there is What Hunts Inside the Shadows and What Lurks Between the Fates. I'm pretty sure this is the trilogy complete, and it is a spicy fantasy romance, I believe. I may be completely incorrect on that, but really looking forward to reading those. I then bought this and I had no idea it was going to be so huge. It is Plain Bad Heroines by Emily M. Danforth. And again, I got this from the TikTok shop. Very strange. So it says, in the early 1900s, Brooke haunts... Brookhant's students, Flo and Clara, fell madly in love, brought together by their obsession for a scandalous memoir. A few months later, they were found dead in the woods after a horrific wasp attack, the book lying next to their intertwined bodies. Three more grisly deaths followed before the school was forced to close. Now the school's doors are open once more, but as the crew of glamorous young actresses assembled to start filming, past and present begin to blur, and soon it's impossible to tell quite where the curse ends and Hollywood begins. But it is a huge book. Oh, there's a bit of artwork in it. Ooh. Um, yeah, it's like 600 pages. So yeah, I got Plain Bad Heroines. It just sounds really interesting. I wanted to read it. We're almost there, people. <laughs> I picked up Wild Blood. This is by Lauren Blackwood and she wrote Within These Wicked Walls, which I read a couple of months ago. I can't remember when, but I absolutely love that book. So yeah, I picked up Wild Blood and I was really looking forward to reading it. Um, I finally got The Shadows Between Us by Trisha Levenseller. I'm kind of gutted that I didn't get the hardback because it was so beautiful and I really wanted it. Um, but I just, yeah, I just missed it. Uh, but they finally came out with these new covers. So yeah, I got The Shadows Between Us by Trisha Levenseller, finally. I picked up The Sweetness of Water, which sounds like a really difficult read. It says, Landry and Prentice are two brothers born into slavery. Finally freed as the American Civil War draws to its bitter close, cast into the world without a penny to their names. Their only hope is to find work in a society that still views them with nothing but intolerance. Farmer George Walker and his wife Isabella are reeling from a loss that has shaken them to their core. After a chance encounter, they agree to employ the brothers on their land and slowly the tentative bonds of trust begin to blossom between the strangers. But this sanctuary survives on a knife's edge and it isn't long before a tragedy causes the inhabitants of the nearby town to turn their suspicion onto these new friendships with devastating consequences. It just sounds like it's going to be a really hard hitting novel and uh, it was long listed for the 2021 book prize. So I'm very looking forward to reading this, but I think, <laughs> I think I'm going to have to be in the right mood to read this because I think it's going to be a challenging read and very frustrating. So yes, The Sweetness of Water by Nathan Harris. I finally also picked up The Devil Makes Three. This is about two young adults, Tess and Elliot, who stumble upon an ancient book hidden in a secret tunnel beneath their school library. And when they read it, they accidentally release a devil from his book bound prison and he'll stop at nothing to stay free. It just sounds really interesting. I love anything about demons, ghosts, horror, you know this. And I've been wanting to read this for quite a while. I've heard quite a few people say they really enjoyed this horror. So yep, The Devil Makes Three. I picked up the second, I literally picked this up today actually. <laughs> Um, the first one is Twin Crowns, and this is Cursed Crowns. I haven't read the first one, but I still bought the second. We know what I'm like at this point. I picked up Lapvona uh, from the author of My Year of Rest and Relaxation. I do have that on my Kindle, but I have not read it yet. Welcome to Lapvona. In a village in a medieval fiefdom buffeted by natural disasters, a motherless shepherd boy finds himself at the centre of a power struggle that puts all manner of faith to a savage test. That's literally all, it's, all it says, but I've heard incredible things about it and I'm very interested to read it because I want to know what it's about. <laughs> yeah, so Lap, Lap Vona. Right, we're at the last two books <laughs> and I'm very excited about both of them. I picked up How to Kill Men and Get Away With It. Do I need to say anything more about this? It just sounds awesome. Uh, yeah, it's about a woman who becomes a serial killer of men. He was following me, that guy from the nightclub who wouldn't leave me alone. I hadn't intended to kill him, of course, but I wasn't sorry when I did. And despite the mess I made, I appeared to get away with it. That's where my addiction started. I've gotten a taste for revenge and quite frankly, I'm killing it. <laughs> Doesn't that sound really fun? I'm really looking forward to that. 
Um, and then my very last book, but certainly not least, is Love in the Time of Serial Killers. I'm really looking forward to reading this. I've heard incredible things. Yeah, it's very popular on TikTok and it is about <laughs> a woman who is obsessed with true crime and she's convinced that a man is a serial killer. It's not long before Phoebe realises that Sam might be something much scarier. A genuinely nice guy who can pierce her armour to reach her vulnerable heart. <laughs> Yeah, sounds really interesting. And that is everything. I don't know, I lost count of how many books. It was a lot of books. 46 books, but including uh, Goodnight Mr. Tom, 45 new books. So it's not as bad, really, when you think about it, you know? Anyway, I really hope that you enjoyed this video. I hope you found some books that you may be interested in getting. I'm sorry if I kind of rushed through. It's just, I had a lot of books to talk about and I didn't want to be reading all of the synopsis because I would have just been here for ages. So if there is anything that sounds interesting, um, I really hope that you will enjoy it. And uh, yeah, I really hope that you enjoyed this video and I will hopefully see all of you lovely people in the next one. All right, bye guys.